uh, just to start, especially for new entrepreneurs or who want to start a business, this is the common misconception. You think that when you start a business, think of a business idea, you're full of biases wherein you think you'll be successful in this amount of time. But in reality, there are full, the market is full of uncertainties and that uncertainties would derail your plan at some point. So failure is inevitable. It's up to you on how to manage it. Now, what I'll be discussing is not a foolproof technique for you to think of successful business idea. These business ideas that you will be thinking of are good on paper, but in reality, they are not yet tested. And when I mean not yet tested, you need to validate in a form of feedback, at least from your customers. Because in business, when you're starting a business, you're really doing risk management. Why risk management? Because with so many happenings all around the, the market, uncertainty is at all-time high. And when uncertainty is high, the chances of you succeeding is not that good. What you need to do is to minimize those risks. The, the way to minimize is to test the business idea, which would be a different topic altogether, but at least you should have a feel on what a successful or what a good business idea on paper, all right? Um, when you're selling something that no one wants, maybe you're, you thought of an idea, you build a business plan, a lengthy business plan, or immediately you build a uh, e-commerce store without really testing, you have the risk of selling something or building a business that no one wants. You don't want to do that. Uh, that is called market risk. And again, as I mentioned, what you need to do is to test the business idea. So let me be clear that what I'll be discussing are ways to generate good ideas on paper. It's not really tested yet. And that's the point of the course. As we go through the 16 weeks of the course, you would have uh, knowledge on how to at least test those business idea. To test for number one, the desirability. Do your customer want the product or the service you're trying to sell? Do you have... Uh, feasibility, which means can you really produce such product or service? And third, you need to have viability wherein the cost should be lower than the price you'd be selling the product and service. All right? So scenario one, uh, in the profile uh, where, where you submitted, uh, answers for the course questionnaire. There are six, I believe. I don't know if there are others who, who answered more, but they don't have a business idea. That's their number one fear in starting a business. Maybe not really, uh, they don't, they have an idea, but they don't think their ideas are good enough. All right. So scenario one, you can start the business because you don't have any idea, business idea, okay? So the first technique that you need to do is to assess yourself. Why you need to assess yourself? In business, uh, the factors of, of a business are land, uh, labor, capital, and maybe technology. So the most important aspect in starting a business is the entrepreneur, the team, or the individual who will be, will be founding the business. So if you're starting a business, you need to know your own capabilities. And by doing so, you would know how can you attack certain market problems. So the first technique is to assess yourself. Number one, what are your experiences? Successful entrepreneurs usually 
come from uh, as employees wherein they are working in a certain industry. They've known the ins and outs of that business. And by doing so, they would have a good experience. What's a good, what's a bad business idea. So list your experiences in terms of work, in terms of uh, your your maybe work, uh, the team you have uh, dealing with, that's your experience. You can take something out of that experience and that would be useful, especially if you're building something related to uh, the, the work you're currently doing. So that's your experience. So what are your strengths? What skill are you good at? Or uh, is there something unique in you that you can consider your strength? You need to list those down. Uh, passions. There is a debate wherein you should follow your passion. But uh, in my opinion, if, if a passion is used in a business, you won't be, uh, you won't be, you won't be, uh, you won't be frustrated, or maybe you would continue to persevere even if faced with failure. So that's what I see in passion, uh, in terms of starting up a business. So you can list those down, your passion. If you love, take a photo maybe, or maybe you love to draw, whatever. You just list those down. And last, but certainly not the least, what are your current resources in terms of time, in terms of money or capital, and in terms of access to certain inputs? If you have a family business, you supply something in the market, that is a current resource. So if you have contacts, that would be a good resource so what's the use of uh, assessing yourself when you know your experience your strength your passion resources you will know your true capability and that would be one ingredient in matching customer or target market needs or wants to your capability and that would be a powerful technique in thinking of successful or good business ideas on paper okay so that's the first step you assess your capability now on the second part of uh, thinking of innovative and unique business ideas you need to find the best market now this is a dilemma especially for those starting who am I, I going to target? That's the usual question that I get. Now, there are many ways you can just think of a market uh, now, but there are ways for you to trim down the best market from the, the people you, you, you're dealing with or talking to uh, from uh, day to day. So first, is identify the groups you belong to. So maybe, uh, as I mentioned a while ago, maybe you're good at taking photos. So I believe you have a, a photographer circle or you're working at a certain company. That company is a group that you belong to. List as many as possible. And that would be useful in uh, creating ideas for the target market to uh, pursue. Now, it doesn't matter if, if so many or it's so, the, the groups you're identified are so small. The, the, the trick here is identify groups that you have a uh, good experience or you have uh, at least experience in, in, uh, in doing the same uh, passion or maybe the same work because when you're experiencing a certain task in a certain group, you would know the gaps, you would know the problems, you would know the ins and outs of a certain group. So that would be very crucial 
in identifying the best target market. So just list those down. Second, who among those groups you identified earlier are the easiest to talk to? This is crucial in building your market research. As I mentioned a while ago, uh, business, business ideas are good on paper, but in reality, you need to validate those out through feedback. And by, by identifying the groups that are easy to talk to, you would know or you have the capability to talk to them instantly and ask for feedback. So just select among the first groups you identified who are the easiest to talk to, easiest to talk to personally and online. And last, and more importantly, who among your groups pay for things? So if your uh, group identified maybe uh, just a group of households in a certain barangay, uh, it's not that uh, profitable as compared to groups of uh, business owners, maybe. So this is the reason why successful businesses usually target other businesses because they value time, they value uh, effort, and they would pay for productivity. So it doesn't matter uh, what's the biggest, what's the, uh, the smallest, capability for, for payment, but at least you would know who would get their wallet and give you the money for a certain product or service. So with that, you would have an idea of who's the most profitable, which is the point of you building a business, right? You want to get profit. And then when, when you identify the best group uh, that satisfies the three uh, criteria here, group, groups you belong to, you have experience in that group, groups that pay for things, and lastly, groups that are easy to talk to, you would have an idea what market to pursue. Now, it doesn't end there. You need to know what are the usual problems that they they encounter, which is related to your capability. So that's one way to uh, think of unique business idea, unique because you will be matching your capability to the problems of the groups you selected or the group you selected. Uh, it's uh, unique uh, because you only, you're the only one who have that capability and you are targeting a certain group that, that, that has uh, the, the problems you want to, to answer through your business, right? Now, um, this is a sample of the business idea map just, uh, that I just discussed. So when you enumerated the groups according to these filters, you enumerated your capability, you can match those two. And by doing so, you can create unique business idea. However, there is a section here about target market problems. Since you belong to that group, you should have an idea what are the usual problems that they have that you may want to use as an opportunity for a unique business idea. Okay? So, uh, an example. An example uh, I just used uh, a business of mine so that uh, I won't have the risk of uh, putting something that is not true. <laughs> so this is uh, Pearson is a management consulting company, a small one that uh, I run with a uh, partner of mine. So we enumerated groups that I belong to our management professionals that includes managers or executives in private companies, training consultants, uh, corporate planning. So these are people who conduct strategic planning workshops, consulting businesses, and lastly, government contractors. So these are consultants specific for uh, 
government institutions, right? So among those groups, uh, I thought that the easiest one to talk to our management professionals, uh, maybe maybe uh, just because uh, I was in a uh, business school program before, so I have the access to these networks, training consultants, uh, people who do training similar to mine, so I can easily talk to them. Uh, and then group that pays. So among between the two, the training and the management, I chose the training consultants because these consultants, if ever there are productivity or improvement in their, uh, in their practice, they would pay for things. Now, uh, on the capability side, on the capability side, uh, experience, it's more on, it's like online and training. Strengths are more on knowledge. Uh, and then uh, credentials as uh, an instructor or senior lecturer in the University of the Philippines. So I think I have that strength. And then marketing, marketing of the training itself. And then passion, e-commerce teaching, resources. I have, uh, I pay for a server, so I have access to, I, I, can, I have the capability to build learning management system. It's like an online classroom. And then I have uh, so many assets that I can use, digital assets like books, manuals, and then applications. All right. So when I had this brainstorming uh, on my own, so I said that I could be a subject matter expert for trainings, but with online learning capabilities. So that would be my unique capability that I can think of during that time. Now, uh, when I talk to the training consultants, uh, they would want training designs with matching resources and activities, meaning there are slides, there are templates, there are manuals with the activities that can customize their training. So what I thought uh, is my business idea for this specific example is a downloadable and customizable training asset. So it's like a template wherein you just put in your name and you can use instantly. It includes slides, facilitation guides, activity list with instruction, and templates that participants of a certain training can just fill, fill up. So um, the idea basically is to create a downloadable digital product that can be sold online. So that's uh, how the business idea map works, all right? So uh, scenario two, scenario two. This is uh, the easiest among the four scenarios that, that you can uh, see. Uh, th this is something about discovering an opportunity. So let's say you know someone who have this problem or who want to hire someone or want to create, or there are problems that wherein you can jump in and create a business for. So that's uh, an example of discovering an opportunity. So um, this would be different mainly because the group's identification can be eliminated because uh, you just know, uh, that there is an opportunity from a specific target market. So in my example, Pearson Management Consulting uh, started, in, started in this scenario, scenario two. So the story is that uh, during the pandemic, uh, government institutions have training budgets that they need to spend. And 
the restriction, physical restrictions, face-to-face training are not permitted. So they are searching for, uh, this was back 2020. So they're searching for training, online training, that is not, not just a simple Zoom, three-day Zoom. There is no really learning. It's just, you, you can't really have assess training via Zoom without proper assessment, right? So the problem is well, with the government, they need to have a training wherein there is an assessment that the bosses can look and check whether the participants or the government employees really learn. So the idea was to create training programs latched on a learning management system. So it's like creating the, the first training that we had here is data analytics. So using data uh, in their departments and using that for additional insights. But quick Zoom or, or, or three-day Zoom isn't enough. So we had this contract wherein they would, we would create a data analytics training with a learning management system, similar to my portal. But, but it's like just three days wherein they would just hear the presentation, the discussion via Zoom, and there would be assignments and exams on a certain website that we would build for them that passing the exams or the, the, the validation exams would earn them the certificate from the, the government, from the training group of a certain uh, government institution. All right, so that's the idea. So uh, it's very simple because we now have an, uh, uh, a set of problems with with several specifications wherein uh, we just created customized government training with learning management system. So they just need to log in, see the presentation, attend the live discussion, and then have this uh, evaluation at the end. All right. So this is the start of the, the Pearson Management Consulting uh, business that I currently manage. So same. Same experience, same strength, same passion, resources. So if you're wondering, uh, this is the actual website. So if you can see, there is a login set up. There are certain workshops. And then when you log in, you would go to a totally different website wherein there is a video and then there are exams that they need to pass for a certain training. Uh, specifically for government institution. So that's uh, the story, uh, story to explain scenario two. You just found out an opportunity and you use that opportunity to build a business from. So majority of entrepreneurs start with this scenario. But there are times where you don't have an idea, you can go back to scenario number one. All right. Okay, scenario three. Scenario three. What if I have a product or service in mind? This is the majority of students in both courses. So they entered introduction to e-commerce or new enterprise planning with a certain product in mind. Like, let's say... The, per, the, usual ex, the usual student uh, that I always have in both courses, they are selling cosmetics. So they, have, they are retailers of a certain brand and they want to grow through online or through, through um, physical expansion maybe. So there are two types of this scenario too, wherein you're selling a product wherein you don't have creative flexibility, which means you cannot change the product because the product is uh, made, made already. Or you have your, the, 
the owner of a certain product that you originally manufactured. So you have the creative flexibility to change some parts. So we have two scenarios here. So for the first scenario, you, you can't change the product or the service you are selling. You would use this scenario to think of marketing messages that would create a different perception in the minds of your customers. Uh, it's very difficult to change or to use the business or the product and service for different set of uh, customers or change. Maybe that's not in the contract or something. So you, you can use this for marketing messages to build a different brand and perception so that you can uh, use that marketing message to gain more brand awareness. But if you are an owner, you manufacture originally the product, you can change based on uh, this, this business idea, man. All right? So if you have a product or service uh, that you want to sell, but you really don't have a clue, how can you package that in a different, unique way? Uh, so this is uh, the way to go. So if you have that product, you should have a target market for that product. Now, to identify the correct way to target that specific uh, niche, you need to know what are the jobs fulfilled of your product and service. So these are the tasks completed by your target market uh, using your product and service. Or maybe the competitor. Uh, your competitor, the, the direct competitor of your product and service. So there are many jobs uh, done by your target market. It could be functional, work-related, house-related. It could be economic based on savings, based on cost. It can be emotional or jobs that may affect their feelings. And then for social, uh, jobs that may affect uh, others. The perception of others uh, for that specific target market. So uh, emotional and social are tricky uh, jobs to be identified, mainly because you need to have vast experience in dealing with a certain target market, or you have uh, a capability in, 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 in identifying those. So these are... Uh, the uh, emotional and social jobs are the jobs fulfilled by applications such as Facebook, social media. So it's more on emotional and social rather than the functional and economic. So uh, when you have identified the jobs, you need to know the frustrations of your target market when using the product or service. Doesn't mean the product and service that you are selling, it could be for another direct competitor. So the easiest way to know the pains, if maybe you're selling uh, uh, um, cell phone, for example, cell phone, you're selling cell phone, a certain brand, you find e-commerce websites that selling similar items and read there are complaints in the review. You would know the, their frustration. That's the easiest uh, way. The hardest is to go to your target market, ask them the specific pains that they're encountering in doing the task using a certain product or service. It could be yours or it could be for others, other competitor. And then gains are the benefits they wish the product and service have, right? Again, it's very difficult if you're selling something that you can't customize. So if you're selling a certain brand of cosmetics that you can't really change, uh, it's, it will be very difficult to change the, the iteration of the product, right? So you would be limited to doing marketing, right? So if you identify the jobs who failed, pains, gains, you have a customer, a detailed customer profile. Customer profile is a representation of your target market. So 
if your target market is, uh, let's say, photographers, your customer profile is a representation of photographers. So a photographer do this job, and by doing so, they have these frustrations, and then uh, they wish they have this uh, benefit, something like that. So you would know deeper your target market in, in doing this exercise. Now, you need to enhance your product and service. So your product and service, there are relievers. So the frustration, you can solve the frustration by tweaking your product design or you can tweak the marketing messages, messages so that they would have the perception of uh, a certain product solving a specific need, right? Uh, and the creators, you offer better experience uh, or you change something in your uh, ad, ad maybe, ad on some of the elements of your offer so that you can get more value uh, because when you address certain benefits wished by your customers, the perception of high value comes into play, all right? Okay, so example, uh, this is very uh, tricky business idea map for a certain product or service that you already have, right? Example, uh, again, this is a hypothetical example, Pearson. Uh, Let's say I have I let's say I, I conducted several strategic planning workshops. All right. So I have this training manual that I can use uh, as a product. So that's a product and service in mind. Now, when I ask the strategic planning workshop trainers, so these are individuals who do strategic planning workshops for companies or big institutions, small institutions, SMEs, the jobs fulfilled by training manual, specifically for strategic planning workshop, is that the training manual uh, helps them know concepts quickly in case they forgot, all right? The, the training manual manages the cue and the spiel so that if they read or there's a certain uh, scenario or in an instance, they can just glance on the training manual and they would know what to say. So there are scripts yeah, on, on the training manual or certain segments of the training. And then third, every strategic planning workshop, in my experience, usually have different feedback, different groups of people attending. So some activities uh, are not fit. So you need to customize on the fly. And the training manual helps you, helps the strategic planning workshop trainers to change the activity. So uh, instantly based on the participants, right? That's a job fulfilled, right? Of training manual. However, the paints... Uh, as the, train, the strategic planning workshop trainers enumerated are they don't want to bring paper copies of training manual, right? Because it's uh, heavy and it can be misplaced. Also, it's very difficult to find specific concepts uh, on the whole training manual. The training manual is a 100-page uh, document. So finding specific concepts would be very difficult if you're pressed with time, if you're conducting a strategic planning workshop. And also, participants are always asking for copies, right? And maybe you don't have extra copies and it's very costly to print, right? So that's the pains. The gains. They want to look intelligent, strategic planning trainers. Uh, they want to review if there are gaps on time, breaks. They want to review instantly. And it can facilitate 
feedback not just the face to face feedback feedback but the, the the manual can be a tool to get feedback from um from the participants right okay so uh, my bright business idea a hypothetical one though is an interactive training manual application so it's like uh the, the relievers on how i can address the pains it's in electronic format shareable right and then the creators it's cloud based and mobile phone application so if i would think of uh, a similar product and service this is an application that i use it's a library of facilitation techniques something like that so if i'm searching for energizer if the training uh, is not the energy of the training is not that high i can easily think of energizer trainings and all or section activities sort of like that so that's an example of how i can package the training manual aligned with the needs of uh, the target market i am pursuing right so what if i cannot change the electronic format or, or the the format it's in paper so i would i would use the pains gains to create uh to address to create messages for marketing so that i can still sell the paper copy of the training manual uh, but uh, using the pains as a way to address or, or to create good messages to attract uh, the workshop trainers to buy from from pearson in, in this case All right so it's different for for entrepreneurs who can change uh, the, the product and service to those who cannot because you're limited to do marketing message to, to persuade just to persuade and to create a good brand a good perception but if you can change your product and service you can tweak the features you can create a totally different product or service that can better address the pains and gains of your target market all right this is just an example uh, uh, a hypothetical example though i may pursue but it's very very uh so far ahead okay now in the first three scenario we are talking about problem solution fit meaning you identified a certain problem that you have a an evidence at least that the problem exists and you have a solution that aligns to that specific problem problem solution fit in in a nutshell it's like uh, you solve you create an idea on paper and it works on paper but you really don't have enough validation to say that this idea would be a big, big business in the near future. You can't really say that in the problem solution fit. That's why you need to validate through customer feedback or maybe uh, through, through customer evidence if you feasibility analysis. Yeah. Right. So... In the first three scenario, uh, in reducing uncertainty, you need to ask these three questions. A no in at least one would make your business not so good. So you, you, should, uh, you should have yes on this three question. So when you thought of a, a business idea, ask, is it something customers want to know if the desirability is high if you're some if you're selling something that customers or target market don't want that's not a good idea to pursue 
Second, is it something they would pay for? So you would have an idea uh, of the viability if you have cost uh, numbers. So the more difference between cost and the price would be your profit margin. The larger, the better. So you, at least you have a positive profit margin. Last, is it something that I can solve? Or is it something that I can produce? Now, the, the usual example here is, let's say you're selling uh, medicine, over-the-counter medicine for COVID-19. Is it something customers want? Yes. Is it something they would pay for? Yes, obviously. But third, is it something that I can solve? Is it something that I can produce on my own? Not so much. So you need to have yes on these three uh, questions, right? Now, as promised, scenario four, what if I already have a business? Now, if you're enrolled in the Introduction to E-Commerce course or New Enterprise Planning and you have an existing business, obviously, you want to use the knowledge for your business to grow. Uh, if I'm not mistaken. So these are ways how you can generate ideas for business growth. Okay, so the business idea map is start with the low-lying fruit, which is your customer data. Now, customer data is really important for an operating business because these are clues that your customers given you. Now, when you, when you have a customer data, you need to identify who are the primary target market. Primary means the target market you are really aiming for. Then secondary, what are the, the type of uh, customers you have that doesn't fit your primary target market? And third, there can be surprising segments, meaning uh, you'd be surprised when someone... Uh, when maybe you're selling uh, uh, a unique product that you don't expect uh, someone would buy from. So that's uh, a surprising segment. We'll have an example later. Feedback. Now, among the primary, secondary, or other segments you have identified, you need to map out the complaints and the patterns that you can see from existing customer data. Now, that's internal data. So you can get feedback from your uh, customers that can be considered internal intelligence. Now, you need to match those out with the lifestyle of those customers. So how they live, how they play, how they work. Usually you can have this data if you would talk to your customers uh, your existing customers. You would ask the trends, how they usually live, go to work, what's the trendy now, what would be the change in their preferences. And uh, that would be very useful in adapting to current times. So those techniques can be considered business intelligence. Now, um, when you know the primary, secondary, and surprising segments, you would know uh, who among those are underserved or unserved, meaning there are opportunities in those markets. Now, for the feedback, based on the complaints, based on the patterns, you can improve your product and service. And then for the lifestyle, uh, whatever you found out, you can repackage or repurpose your products and service to ride on those emerging trends. So the key concept here for operating businesses is to use existing information that you have. And you need to develop improvements on your products and service. That would create a new value proposition, a new offer, a new benefit for your market. Now, uh, the, you, can, you can expand to new segments. You can create 
you can use the pro existing product to a different market. That's up to you. Uh, so you need to know what's the best market to pursue. That's why underserved and unserved. You need to know that there is a good demand. All right. So the key here is development, improving product and service. There are many ways to improve to create new value proposition for your product and service. You can tweak for superior product and service. You can lower the price. You can create larger choices, more colors, more flavor, something like that. You can have uh, exclusivity, meaning you would produce less so that you can charge more. You can create faster services. You can customize and uh, personalize by being closer to your customers. Um, it can be easier in terms of uh, buying uh, or purchasing. Or you can create prestige from, uh, as an aspirational product or service. So these are ways on how you can improve your products and service again development should come from your customers why because when we talk about quality quality is defined of higher expectation best something or faster but when we talk about quality the specification comes from your customer expectation if they expect uh, let's say a product should be this high of, or a product should be weighing uh, one kilo if you if you supplied with the, the product weighing one kilo exactly that would be of high quality so maybe if you're if you're selling or if you're selling in more quantities that would exceed their expectation. That would be of higher quality. So again, development should come from customer requirements. And you can only do that if you know the complaints and the insights uh, from your primary, secondary data. Uh, customer, I mean. Okay. Example, example. This is uh, a hypothetical example again uh, using Pearson. So, um, Customer data. So our customers are government, contractors, management professionals. And the surprising one is that there are individuals who are not employed but inquiring for the training. Now, uh, the feedback is that they want to learn how to be a trainer and maybe operating a small training business that's the the feedback now the lifestyle uh the emerging trend of being uh, young coaches if you if you uh, happen to come across that trend there are many coaches life coaches and coaches for every every facet of life so uh now the the expansion is from institutional institutional uh, the underserved market are are individuals who want to be trainers who want to learn now uh, that could be an underserved market though the profitability is not that high because again uh, business to business or business to institution are more lucrative however as a source of innovation source of expansion we can focus the 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 company can focus from institutional to retail. So that's the expansion. Development is tweaking or, or changing, revising the training uh, for individuals who want to train. Because majority of the, the customers of Pearson are, uh, uh, are participants of the training who are who want to practice what they've learned, not to train others. 
So that's the development, uh, an exclusive training to become uh, trainers instead of practitioners. Sorry, that's trainers. And then for the repurpose, we can package. It's like a coaching style. Uh, it's it's instructional design. So um, the, the idea uh, based from this existing customer data and uh, the current improvements on, on our current product and service could be a uh, management coaching course for small and medium enterprises or maybe for, uh, uh, for trainers or training to become a coach, management coach, something like that. So uh, this is just examples. Uh, the, the, all of the examples happened, scenario one and two happened. As to the three and four, uh, these, there are plans, but uh, not yet uh, materializing, all right? So, Um, I've talked about prob problem solution fit. Uh, it's like having a problem and solving that through your product and services on paper. When we talk about product market fit, you have evidence that your product can be bought by your target market. And there is really an opportunity. And the chances of you failing is significantly reduced. So your product can really be sold. In the problem solution fit, you, it's not that simple wherein you just wrote out something on paper and uh, that would be an accessible one. You haven't validated yet through sales. So you can ask, you can ask for feedback, you can look for reviews, but you haven't tested selling the actual product to your target market. That's why product market fit uh, is perfect for those students who have uh, operating businesses, all right? So the question for, for uh, operating businesses who have expansion plans are different when uh, as compared to those who are starting, just starting to have a business. So you need to have five yeses on this before you pursue your growth plans. The first is the market real. Uh, is it big enough? Because when you are expanding, that requires additional capital. And if the market is not big enough, that can justify the investment uh, that you would be doing. Third, can it be profitable based on uh, the willingness of your customer to pay for a certain product or service. Fourth, uh, can we differentiate? Because when you expand, you are entering into another market which has a current uh, business serving that market. So you need to know who are your competitors in that space. You're lucky if you are the first one to uh, target a certain group or a certain underserved market. Uh, that is called, if you're familiar, the blue ocean strategy. So you're the first one to, to offer a certain service for a certain target market. But that doesn't happen normally. Um, you Usually you have competitors. And uh, last but not the least, can you win the market? Or can you at least win a certain market share or customers who are buying from the current business serving that market? So uh, these are the guide questions for your business idea. So uh, just to recap what happened, expectation, it's, it's not straight line. It's not a linear upward sloping line. There, the, the, the true execution of a business, there are many failure, there are many detours. The, the trick is how can you navigate through uncertainty 
to failures. And that can be summarized by this principle that I usually teach in the course, which is to think big, start small, and act fast. You think big. You should have an end destination for your business. That would be your dream business. That's why I've asked the question on your questionnaire. But you need to start small so that you can uh, minimize uh, big losses. More importantly, you start small, you can learn through quick experiments, meaning there are assumptions in a business plan. There are assumptions for starting an e-commerce business. And by starting small, you can uh, validate the certain assumptions that or biases that you have. In my example, in my current uh, practice of business, let's say I want to expand for, uh, let's say, uh, the, the examples a while ago. I can do uh, a prototype of the training ask something or ask a certain group and test quickly in a month, one month period and know if that would work before I spend. Uh, so that way I can have validated learning. So validated learning is uh, validating or falsifying the assumptions you had in your plans uh, in e-commerce and in the actual physical business. So you start small. Uh, the, the risk or the good thing in starting small is when you fail, the cost of investment is not that high. So uh, when you start small, uh, the losses are uh, small. So by doing so, more learnings, you can have more learnings. And also you have uh, the luxury of of having enough cash for uh, continuing persevering to get the best business, the ver best version of your business or the business idea. And then acting fast, meaning you do experiments in a week or a month time so that you will learn more about your target market. You don't want to uh, invest on everything and then learn at the end that it doesn't uh, your market or your product doesn't really uh, uh, or doesn't really sell or it's, isn't desirable. So by acting fast in a sprint, we call that sprint, uh, you will have more learnings. And the more learning you have for your target mar market, the better uh, chances you are eliminating or reducing uncertainty. So you think big, you start small, you act fast. Uh, usually when it's, uh, I start business, I focus on niches, small groups wherein I can um, experiment, sell my product, ask for feedback in a month's time so that I can quickly change, I can quickly improve so that when the time comes, I have the full, uh, the full information, the full, full confidence, I can fully invest my capital and pursue bigger markets. So that's um, the principle. And I hope you would get something from this uh, discussion.